Hey there guys and gals, this is the little uh, um, walkthrough slash example video uh, that should help uh, guide you through your atomic bonding and structures worksheet um, and also completion of this little this little worksheet thing here, okay? So as I was talking about in the actual uh, lesson one video over atomic structures and atomic bonding, uh, there's certain ways that we can model the key that use of that word we're going to do some modeling here okay scientific modeling there's ways that we can model and show how electrons are shared or given or taken away how bonds are formed between different elements all righty so uh we're going to do that here with this little video and this video should help you in completion of that worksheet all right and uh and completely um finish your understanding or the construction of your knowledge over these first two major concepts all right so, elements are always, like we've talked about, always looking for balance, especially in their outer energy levels. They want to be like their closest noble gases and have eight electrons in their outermost energy level or shell, or none at all, okay? Um, some vocab before we begin, I'm going to use the term valence, as in electrons that are in the outermost energy level that lend themselves to bonding. So, valence is a term that we're going to use here. And it's going to go hand in hand with valence electrons. Valence electrons, stuff I'm going to talk about. Oxidation number. That is a number that is assigned to an element in a chemical combination that represents the number of electrons lost or gained by an atom of that element in the newly formed compound or molecule. Thanks. That definition was from the <laughs> courtesy of a Google search, okay? Uh, so very wordy. Basically, um, how many electrons were involved in the bond, okay? For a particular element, how many electrons were involved in a newly formed bond? That's what the oxidation number is, okay? Um, valence and oxidation numbers uh, typically go hand in hand when we're studying atomic bonding. Last two here deal with ions, okay? Um, ions are elements that have either gained or lost electrons and therefore have a slightly different atomic charge. So if your oxygen and you have eight protons and eight electrons, and you gain two more electrons, then now you have 10 negative charges to eight positive charges. You are an anion in that you have a slightly negative charge. If you are potassium and you lose one electron, okay, you now have one more proton than you do electrons, so you have a slightly positive charge and you're a cation. So we're going to look at ions here because ions are formed during ionic bonding, okay? So let's go ahead. I think I've said oh, so, and okay enough, um, and um, but we're going to keep on going here. Uh, let me get this situated. Let's break down some of these elements and see how they might bond with other elements to achieve that balance I've been talking about, okay? Now to do this, since I don't have my board working with this software and I don't have the tablet, I'm going to write on this trusty yellow pamphlet here and uh, occasionally show it in the video, so just so we can do some stuff. But um, chlorine, what's the atomic symbol of chlorine? If you don't know it off the top of your head, let's practice and let's look here on the periodic table of elements. Here's chlorine, Cl, chlorine. So the atomic symbol is Cl. 17, that's atomic number. That's telling us how many protons it has. And we know by rule that an element has the same amount of electrons as it does protons. So let's head back to our table. Atomic symbol, chlorine, Cl. Total number of electrons, 17. What's the number of valence electrons? Let me show you here, okay? I'm going to draw an atomic model, all righty? So I'm going to put Cl here in the center, all right? Cl's in the center of this guy, okay? Um, that first circle represents the nucleus, okay? So we have 17 protons and neutrons inside that. This next circle I draw is the first energy level, okay? We know from the first video that there can be two electrons in the first energy level, so I'm going to put two little E's in that first energy level. I'm going to draw another energy level, and I'm going to fill it, and eight can go in that. So I'm going to put eight E's on this second energy level, okay? I'm going to draw another energy level because I have to put seven more electrons somewhere. So here's what my atomic model would look like for chlorine, okay? What's the number of valence electrons? 
as in how many electrons are in the outermost energy level. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven valence electrons. The number of electrons gained or lost. Now this is an interesting question because again we always want to get to eight, right? Or none at all in the outer shell, the outer energy level. Alrighty? So if this guy has seven, how many electrons are going to be involved in its gaining or losing in order to find balance? Well, it's kind of a rounding issue, similar to math. Since it's closer to eight already, it's going to want to gain one electron. So we'll put plus one. Okay? Its oxidation number then would be one. Potassium. Atomic symbol is K, and it has 19 protons. So we'll put K there, 19 for the total number of electrons, because same amount of electrons as there are protons. Now, what's the number of valence electrons? Okay. Well, we know that the second energy level, if we were to change this from chlorine to potassium, It looks something very similar to this. All right? It looks something very similar to this. And we know that third energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. First two, second eight, third 18. All right. So we put two more electrons on our diagram. Now there's a total of nine electrons in the outermost energy level. So it could give away up to nine? Nah, not really, OK? The number of valence electrons it actually has has would be one, and I'll show you why here, okay? Um, again, I said that electrons fill their energy levels kind of randomly. There is a method to the madness, but it's kind of random. Here's where we'd have more um, method than madness, all right? So what happens is potassium fills its third energy level with eight, and then boots that one extra electron, boots that one extra electron into the fourth energy level. So it doesn't have to completely fill an energy level before it boots one to the next level. What's this cause? Well, it causes one electron to be very far away from the nucleus, meaning the attraction is pretty weak, which means it can get rid of this guy pretty easily and find balance and be like its closest noble gas and have eight electrons in its outermost shell. Okay? So potassium doesn't have nine valence electrons. It only has one valence electron and it would lose one electron, and its oxidation number is one. Now I'm going to let you fill out the rest of these here, okay? Just as practice. Um, it's going to be good practice because it can help you review the periodic table of elements. It's going to make you think about atomic structure, think of protons, think of electrons, and it's really going to set the foundation for bonding, okay, and our bonding diagrams. How do we do bonding diagrams? Well, we construct and utilize more models. We do some of the models that we just did, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to adjust them a little bit, and we're going to write what we call Lewis dot diagrams or Lewis dot structures or just plain old Lewis structures. And it looks something like this, okay? And you have to forgive me again as I do the yellow pad and, and uh, go back and forth from paper to, to screen here. Um, but let's say uh, that we want to diagram uh, aluminum again. How about that, okay? So a Lewis structure, a Lewis dot structure, puts dots around the symbol, and those dots represent the valence electrons. So you don't draw the whole energy levels, okay? You just put out the number of valence electrons. So if I wanted to draw a Lewis structure for aluminum, I would draw AL, and then I would put three dots, okay? Three dots, all righty? Usually you fill the top two, and then you can work clockwise. I've been taught, taught that rule before. I've also been taught, though, that it goes top, bottom, left, right. It doesn't really matter to me. I just don't want more than two dots at either side, right? Because none of these will have eight dots completely, all right? Because, again, we're talking valence electron. That's anything from one to seven, all righty? Because if it has eight, it's a noble gas. It's nice and balanced. So that would be a Lewis dot diagram for aluminum, all right? Um, let's do one for nitrogen, okay? If we look at our periodic table, nitrogen has seven protons, therefore seven electrons. 
So, nitrogen would have two in that first energy level. So how many valence electrons would it have? It'd have five. So a Lewis dot diagram for nitrogen would look something like this. All right? Nitrogen with the five dots around it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we looked at the Lewis dot diagrams and how to just draw them for a single element. Um, they can help us out. It's just another model uh, showing um, kind of some information about that element. Uh, but we really use these Lewis dot diagrams, these Lewis dot structures, to demonstrate ionic and covalent bonding. So let's go ahead and use them to do that. And I'm going to use sodium and chlorine. And I'm going to show an ionic bond using that. Okay? So if we look at sodium, it has 11 protons, therefore 11 electrons. Two in the first energy level, eight in the second. Oh, and it'll have one valence. So sodium's going to have one little dot. And chlorine, we already saw it, right? Earlier. It had seven valence electrons, so it's going to have seven dots. So we're going to start off with something that looks a little bit like this. Okay? Sodium with the one dot, chlorine with the seven dots. Now to show an ionic bond, it's pretty simple. We'll take an arrow and we'll draw it from sodium to chlorine. And the final product looks something like this. Na plus Cl minus. Notice that they're both ions now. The sodium has lost an electron, therefore it is now slightly positively charged. The chlorine has gained an electron, it is slightly negatively charged. They are bonded together by this ionic bond, this giving of an electron, this taking of an electron. Chlorine now has eight electrons in its outermost energy level, so it's very close to being like that noble gas. Sodium now has no all right, valence electrons in eight in its outermost energy level, so it's like its closest noble gas. So these two have bonded together, and by bonding together, they are now a new compound. They have new chemical and physical properties, but they are also now not reactive because the outer energy levels are similar to that of its closest noble gas. This would be a Lewis dot structure for an ionic bond.